welcome to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, the show that brings you man-on-the-street interviews, celebrity guests, groundbreaking research, and heartwarming stories about the reasons we smile. Our show is also known as everything you've always wanted to know about dentistry, but we're too numb to ask. Hello, I'm General Dentist Dr. Kavitko, and thank you for joining me today. The following views and opinions do not necessarily reflect those of this station, its staff, management, or parent company. To hear a replay of this show or one of the great shows that previously aired, log on to TheReasonsWeSmile.com or iTunes, keyword Dr. Kavitko or The Reasons We Smile. Listeners should not use Dr. Kavitko's comments and advice in place of an actual dental exam. Brighten your life with a smile that shows the professional touch of Dr. Kavitko. Time now for The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Call 459-9769 to discuss your dental issues. Now, here's your host, Dr. Kavitko. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Reasons We Smile. I'm Dr. Kavitko. Thank you so much for joining me. This is episode 663. Today in the studio with me is Dr. Corey White, PhD. He's an associate professor in the Department of Psychology at Missouri Western State University. He's going to help us answer the question, when it comes to dental visits, can fear, anxiety, and avoidance be controlled? Okay, before we get started, though, let me remind you, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, it's at Dr. Kavitko. And if you'd please go to my office Facebook page and like us, it's Dr. Kavitko and Associates. And... All past episodes, complete with video, are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com. And in about 10 minutes, you're going to have a chance to win free flowers from DeSantis Florist. Okay, so I'm going to give you the number now. Don't call yet, but the number is 614-459-9769. That's 614-459-9769. And in about 10 minutes, we'll let you know about the question. Okay, if you just listen a little bit carefully or even figure it out on your own, you'll have a chance to win those flowers. So... Okay, like I said, today we have Dr. Corey White, and uh, he has a PhD, and uh, we are going to figure out dental phobia, dental fears, avoidance. We're going to figure out if there's a way we can help you if you're one of those people, which I'm going to imagine about 40% of you are, uh, how you can actually have a dental visit and not break into a cold sweat, or even worse, just run out of the office. All right, Doc? Sounds good to me. (laughs) Okay, so I just want to tell you a little bit about uh, Dr. White. He is a PhD from Ohio State University, got his master's uh, from Ohio State University, his uh, Bachelor of Science from Truman State University. Currently, he teaches. He teaches history and symptoms, intro to neuroscience, and he teaches intermediate psychology. And so we're happy to have you on the show. Thank you so much for joining me. And uh, let me just start, I think, before we went on the air, I mentioned this this uh, this phrase I saw, I was looking for things that would go with today's show, and I'm putting it up there on the screen for the people who are watching on Facebook. And it says, some tortures are physical and some are mental, but the one that is both is dental. And I don't believe that, but that's the feeling out there, right? So we have to help people figure out, you know, what's going on here. So is it true that um, a young person who's traumatized at the dental office uh, would be more likely to be uh, dental phobic as an adult? Yeah, typically, um, and that's true for a lot of phobias, whether you're afraid of dogs or spiders or whatever, is that if you have a traumatic experience early on in your life, um, one of the things we know about our memory system is that we tend to hold on to those strong emotional memories. They become more available in our mind, and later we use them disproportionately to judge the likelihood of something happening. So we call it the availability heuristic. If something is available in your memory, you use it to rate whether a future event will happen. And so if you have a strong, let's say a traumatic or a painful experience from the dentist when you're a child, that sticks out in your memory. And so when you think about the dentist, that's going to be a more memorable occasion than maybe the time where you went to the dentist and everything went fine and it didn't hurt. <laughs> Nobody remembers. No that. one remembers when <laughs> things go to plan. Uh, and, and this is true in, in a number of different areas. I ask my students, are people good at merging on the highway? And they say, no, they're awful. And I'm like, really? They are? And they say, yeah, because I remember that time when someone cut me off. But you don't remember the hundreds of thousands of times when everyone merges smoothly on the highway. Or that you're the one that cut somebody off. Exactly. <laughs> so, okay, so the younger it happens, there is a correlation. But then, does there always need to be a trigger to be afraid of the dentist? Is it like people are claustrophobic? Uh, they're afraid of being in a, a closet or a small room. 
uh, if they weren't in this closet when they were a child, but they could still be afraid of this, right? Or heights. Yes, yes. uh, There are plenty of cases where you have either an extreme anxiety or fear or eventually a phobia where we can't point to a specific traumatic event or trigger that caused it. And so we don't know, did did it happen and we just didn't notice something traumatic happening? Or was it, sometimes we live vicariously, you watch someone else have a, have a troubled experience. Sometimes you read about it or you hear about it on the media, and that's enough for you to become afraid of the uh, the environment. Okay. So we talked about the trigger when you're younger, and the younger you are, the more likely it is to be a trigger. But then how do we explain the times, the, the people that are afraid that never had that trigger? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of it is you learn from others. It's oh. kind of It's a social spread, and so you learn that other people are anxious of it, and you assume that they're anxious for a good reason. That's a really good point. I'll tell you what, we have a lot of young families and very well-meaning parents, like you and your wife, and I don't know if you guys have done this, but uh, when people are getting ready to bring their child to the dentist for the first time, they tend to say something to, like this, Oh, don't worry, Johnny, it's not going to hurt. Right. <laughs> yeah, like, why, why would you bring that up? You don't say that when you're taking them for their first haircut. Nope, or to the zoo, right? Don't yeah, worry, the, don't yeah, worry. The elephants aren't going to bite you. You wouldn't say that, right? No. Because, first of all, they're not. But secondly, they would, you, would, you know that it would scare them. But when it comes to a dental appointment, so parents, if you're listening and you have a little one, please don't say that to them. Leave that to the professionals, and you'd be amazed at how well it will go. Uh, your daughters have been going to the dentist and mm-hmm. actually been coming to our office for most of that time. And neither one is afraid, right? Uh, well, when, well, a- when Avery started when out, Avery afraid. was, uh, t- you know, a year and a half or two, she wasn't too comfortable. But I think that was more about a weird environment. Right. We'll, we'll have to revisit that now that she's a little older and knows what's going on. Right. So I got an email from a, a woman that apparently I treated as a child. I'm actually, uh, I was hiring her husband and her, her and her husband's company to do some tree trimming. And she'd noticed the name and thought there can't be too many Kvitkos. I wonder if that's the same guy that was my dentist when I was a child. And uh, I said, yeah, that's the same one because the, the only Kvitkos in the entire country are me, my brothers, uh, my sons, that sort of thing. And so she said, oh, that's great. She goes, hello, I just want, you know, it's nice to talk to you, even though it was an email. And she said, I just want to thank you. I have great memories of going to the dentist as a child. And that just warmed my heart because I know that she's now just, you know, she's very comfortable going to the dentist. Mm-hmm. And she's probably healthier because of it. So now, what you study is, you study human behavior, and what you study are things that we don't even know we do. So I like to use this example where when we walk into a store, the first thing we do, you know this, uh, is look up to the right. Upper right. We look there. We don't know why. We don't even know we do it. So what are some of the other things that you can tell us that about us that we don't even know about ourselves? Just a few quick examples. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a number of uh, what we might call implicit behaviors that you don't you don't know you're doing it. You can't even tell someone you're doing it because you're you're actually unaware. Right. Um, you know, it's a bit of a touchy topic, but sometimes it's brought up in terms of implicit racial bias that you you have a slight racial prejudice or bias and you don't know about it. You don't even know what's happening, um, and that happens. There's a number of different. Um, Uh, biases that we have and sometimes we call heuristics which are just shortcuts that our mind takes I just mentioned the availability heuristic if something sticks out in our memory we use that to judge how likely something is to be Um, we have a number of different biases that might the most painful by or the the most maladaptive bias is confirmation bias which is if you believe something is true you search out evidence that confirms you are correct and you (laughs) and you ignore evidence that shows you are not correct right Um, it manifests in a number of ways. P- politics, if you're if you're on the left side or the right side, the news sites that you visit are probably going to be the sites you know on a on online that confirm that your team was the good team all along. Right. And uh, you know if you're a liberal, you probably don't watch Fox News too much. If you're conservative, you probably don't watch MSNBC. Um, and it means that we kind of funnel ourselves into a little bubble. Um, where we only hear the news that we want. Um, now, this could be related in a way to the dentist in that if you have a fear of going to the dentist, you have a belief that you will it will be painful and unpleasant, whatever. Um, like I said, if you go to the dentist and everything goes fine, you might not really count that as evidence to show that you are wrong, right? You might, oh, that was a fluke. I guess I was lucky that time, <laughs> right? When yeah. really that should count as, you know what? Actually, I can go to the dentist and everything can be... Like one of the times you merged successfully. Yeah, one times you merged success. That should count as evidence, right? right. Uh, just as much as the time that it that it was painful. 
Um, and the other thing that happens is if we have a fear or anxiety of something, we tend to avoid that thing. And avoidance can become crippling in a way because if you avoid experiencing it, you never get the opportunity to realize that your fear was misfounded. Okay. So if you're afraid that going to the dentist is going to cause you a lot of pain uh, and you don't go to the dentist because of that, well, technically you are avoiding that pain. So in your mind, you made the right decision because now I don't have any pain. However, if you... Uh, pardon my French, but if you sucked it up and went to the dentist, <laughs> you might learn it wasn't nearly as bad as you thought it was going to be, and your fears were um, misplaced. Right. Um, there is, uh, there's a lot of evidence. Um, there, we have a bunch of buzz terms in psychology. One of them is called impact bias. The idea that if there's a, an upcoming event that could be negative, we overestimate how bad it's going to be and how long that bad feeling is going to last. Okay. Um, they've done studies uh, in the 2016 election. They did studies of Hillary Clinton fans, and they said, if Hillary Clinton loses, how upset will you be and how long will you be upset for? And, of course, those you know Clinton fans were upset that, that uh, Trump won instead, but they completely overestimated. So they might say, I'll be an 8 out of 10 in sadness, and they ended up actually being a 5 out of 10. And they say it'll last for months, and it only lasts for a couple of days or maybe a week or so. Right. And so the same is true for dental pain. Even if we think it's going to be bad or scary, chances are it's not going to be as bad as you thought, and the discomfort will not last as long as you thought. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind. Yeah. It might be a way that somebody could get up their nerve to actually go and say, I'm going to test out Dr. White's theory. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's not even my theory, right? Yeah. It's like it, I didn't do this research myself, but we know from the field of psychology that that people it's it there's actually the flip side of this. People think good things will be better than they are. Winning the lottery <laughs> will change my life and I'll be happy for the rest of my life. Right. Guess what? You know, after a, f a few weeks of being super rich, now being rich is normal and right. you're back to I guess this is normal. So And you have lots of friends and family that you yes, do, yes. And want then, you to help them out in a lot of ways, right? Yeah. So some of the so i'm thinking about what about the the people where there's no trigger so i told you this morning off the air that i, I had a story about a cricket okay mm -hmm. and you're probably thinking how's he going to tie in a story about a cricket to a dental show that I we're was, about to I do <laughs> <laughs> so anyway um so the other day i went into the garage it was late at night lights were off i turned on the lights and there was a cricket visible right there right behind the car i could have stepped on it Okay, because I don't, I don't necessarily like the chirping, but my cats do, so we're not going to kill them, and I don't tend to kill living things like I did when I was little. I would have picked them up and put them out back, right? That's good. But, um, but anyway, as soon as he realized that I saw him, he started scampering away. It was like his, his survival instinct. Mm -hmm. and, it's the, and so we all have that survival instinct, and I'm thinking that could that be what explains the people that are afraid um, who don't seem to have a trigger? putting themselves in a vulnerable position that could be a negative? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I was actually just teaching in my history of psychology class this recently. One of the, th one of the ways to think about our emotions, which it can include fear and anxiety to a degree, is that at some point in our evolution, they were adaptive. Okay. So being afraid helped you to avoid getting eaten by a lion or whatever challenge our, our ancestors right. had. Um, uh, and so that, that our emotions, uh, we might lament them and say, man, I wish I didn't feel fear. It's a waste of time. But fear is a signal. It's there to tell you something. Get right. out of here. Avoid this situation. Right. The problem is that those emotions aren't always adaptive if they're not applied in the right way. So if you become afraid of something that isn't actually dangerous to you, you engage in avoidance behavior. Like another uh, cricket, maybe. Another cricket, right? Yeah, like... <laughs> you're never going to have babies yeah. if you're not you're now, that afraid cricket, of all crickets. That cricket probably should have been afraid of you. You know, yeah. better safe than sorry. But right. there is the idea of better safe than sorry that some people might think of for the dentist. I'd, it might hurt. And if I don't go, then it definitely won't hurt. So it's better to be safe than sorry. But the flip side of that is that I mentioned most people tend to overestimate how long and how bad bad events will be especially if they're like a, a an acute event uh, right. you know getting your teeth drilled is takes 10 minutes and yeah it's painful but it's 10 minutes it's over right um one thing we underestimate is small lasting effects so something say you have a tooth that's just kind of hurting a little bit right and it lasts right it throbs for each day for for a week or so 
we tend to think that those aren't going to bother us as much as they actually do. Uh -huh. And so if you have something that's a small nuisance or a small amount of pain, but it has a long duration, that actually causes us more distress than something that's a serious, intense pain for oh, a short duration. Okay. But we don't know that. We think it's the other way around. So I'm thinking of now we have to go to a break. When we come back, I'm, that reminded me of the frog in boiling water. Mm -hmm. or water. We'll talk about that when we come back. All right, it is time to do Dr. Kavitka's question of the day. Before we do it, we'd like you to listen to this. This station will not be held liable for any contesting during The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Participation in the contest allows Dr. Kavitko to record and broadcast your name and call. One winner per household, prizes are non-transferable, cannot be substituted, and are subject to taxes and fees. This station cannot be responsible for the inability to enter the contest, whether due to equipment malfunction or telephone difficulties. All decisions of Dr. Kavitko concerning this contest or eligibility are final. And now it's time for Dr. Kavitko's Question of the Day. All right, and remember, you're going to have a chance to win free flowers from DeSantis Florist. They'll be delivered to your place of business this Tuesday afternoon. The question is, what do we know about a person, how a person becomes a dental phobic? A, it can be triggered by a traumatic experience at the dental office. B, there doesn't always need to be a trigger. C, the younger a person is when they are traumatized by a dentist or dental hygienist, the more likely they are to develop a fear that causes them to avoid going to the dentist, or D, all of the above. All right. Number to call, 614-459-9769, 614-459-9769. So go ahead and call now. You won't believe it, though. I want to hear your mind. And there's nothing else hidden in the world tonight. She said people don't take the time. Hey, people don't take the time. Hey, what's going on? It's Keith Carlos, winner of America's Next Top Model and star of Chocolate City 2. You can look for my smile courtesy of Dr. Kavicko on the CBS television network where I play Danny on the hit soap opera, The Bold and the Beautiful. Stay tuned to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, the world's most interesting dentist. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko. Well, we reopened May 1st after the governor had shut down all dental offices except for emergency dental care on March 16th. And I'm happy to say that things are going very well. Our patients are receiving the same great care we've always provided, and we are placing a huge emphasis on infection control. In addition to face shields like the one I've worn since 1985, and of course exam gloves, my entire team is wearing surgical gowns and caps, and we are limiting the number of patients we have in the office at any given time. I'm also happy to report that there's not been a single incident of COVID-19 associated with our office. We're here to provide excellent care in a comfortable way, and what better time than to get your mouth healthy than during this COVID-19 pandemic when you may actually have some free time. We're here to provide excellent dental care in a comfortable way. You will love the results that you get. Give us a call at 614-262-9588. That's 614-262-9588. Or go to our website at drkavitka.com and request an appointment. Dr. Kavicko, let's go! Yeah! Hi, I'm Johanna, and I've been a dental patient at Dr. Kavicko and Associates for over 10 years. I would really recommend Dr. Kavicko for your family's dental care. They're friendly. They're always there to help me. I feel like family when I walk in the door. It's clean. It's comfortable. Even if I have to bring my kids, they have a great playroom for them. I know when I'm with Dr. Kavicko, they are taking that extra time to make sure that I'm going to be the healthiest I can be. They've been great. I love them. Call Dr. Kavitko and Associates today. 614-262-9588. Hi, this is Richard Simmons. Dr. Kavitko's here, and he's going to help you with all of your problems. Uh, are your teeth yellow? He can fix that. Are you missing a tooth? He can put a new one in. How is that? <laughs> That's very good. Thank you, Richard. Okay, we're back. We're doing Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. We don't yet have a winner. I think I caught you guys napping. And I know there are so many pre-recorded shows these days, you probably don't realize this is real, it's live, and you have a chance to win free flowers. So we're going to leave the phone lines open. It's 614-459-9769. The answer is D. You just have to remember that. How about that? 
<laughs> and then I'll re-explain the question later. Okay, but in the meantime, we're going to go on with our discussion with Dr. Corey White. He's a Ph.D. associate professor in the Department of Psychology at Missouri Western State University. And he understands about uh, things that we don't even understand about ourselves. It's what he studies. And, I'll ha and uh, I have to say, being around a psychologist always did make me nervous because I figured they'd be analyzing me. But uh, as long as they're not cutting me open, I'm probably okay with that. Well, well <laughs> I, I always like to tell people um, I'm not cared. Uh, I don't care about your problems because I have my own. Thank you very much. So. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. Okay, so before the break, I mentioned the frog in boiling water, and you know what I'm going to talk about, but what it is is it's this thing where you said small little things happen. Well, if you put a frog in water, room temperature water, and slowly raise the temperature so slow that the frog doesn't notice, it will boil to death. On the other hand, if you put a frog in hot water, it would jump right out because it would realize there's danger there. And I believe that probably explains what you were talking about. Oh, hang on. We have a, we have a winner? Okay. All right. Who do we have? What's your name? My name's Tamika. Hi, Tamika. Thank you for listening. Hi. I bet you were listening and just didn't think you had a chance to win the flowers, right? I didn't, but I knew the answer. Oh, okay. What is the answer? <laughs> the answer was D, all of the above, which was pretty easy. I know. I try to make it easy because it's early morning and people are <laughs> half awake. But uh, anyway, <laughs> so hey, Tamika, what do you do for a living? I actually work as a personal shopper. Oh, wow. Oh, that must be neat. Yeah. Oh, it is. Bringing joy to people, and you don't have to pay for any of that stuff. Oh, it is the best. <laughs> <laughs> probably makes you want to, you probably makes you a better shopper when you're doing it for yourself, I bet. Uh, you know, it's funny. I don't do it for myself because I, I provide so much joy to everyone else. I figure let someone else do Shop it for, for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Well, hey, stay on the line. We need to get the information where my producer can uh, have the florist send those flowers, and he'll be whispering because we're live on the air, okay? Of course. Thank All you. right. Thanks, Tamika. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is episode 663 of The Reasons We Smile. And we were just talking about the, uh, so little, explain that again, little episodes that are unpleasant um, can build up and become worse than a yeah, big one. Yeah, we, we tend to think that something that's uh, severely intense and negative, so like uh, getting your tooth drilled, for example, is going to be worse for our, for our happiness um, overall than something that's kind of lower key or not as not as intense but lasts for a long time. Um, and because of that, we tend to put up with small inconveniences and let them linger, and yet we completely avoid a, a an acute short-term inconvenience or. Right. something that we might be afraid of or like the frog would hop out of the really the frog hot would water hop out of the water it's intense no thank you but it would just sit there and let itself cook slowly if you just turn the turn right. the heat up so with that explain i have this patient she's new to me as of a few weeks ago i think what's happened is is a lot of little irritations at dental offices over the years have now built up to where she's absolutely terrified her husband did most of the talking prior to her appointment and even in the room when she came you know, this dentist uh, numbed her too quickly and that hurt. This dentist mm -hmm. used epinephrine when she said, I don't want it because it makes my heart race. Mm -hmm. And this dentist uh, um, didn't believe her when the numbness was wearing off. And if, before you know it, or maybe not before you know it, but at some point, um, she's a phobic now. Yeah. She's completely. And by the way, we got, I almost edited it. Um, we got her through a visit, which included a lot more than I thought we were going to be able to do on this woman. And when I did the wellness call, she's like, oh, it was great. It was great. Thank you so much. But now, see, she, we couldn't get everything done in the, in the allotted time. She has to come back for like three small fillings, and it's starting all over again. Yeah. So how many of the positive visits do you think it's going to take for her to get away from being so terrified each time she, she's facing a visit? Yeah, I mean, the short answer is uh, between zero and a lot um <laughs> you know we don't know it varies from person to person um but what you're fighting now is a history right she mm -hmm. has this history of small offenses or small occurrences that has taught her that this is a an unpleasant environment and to be fair her her experience has taught her that and and it's right, it's right for her to be cautious mm -hmm. if her past experiences have been situations where she didn't get great care um, and so you have an uphill battle because you have to convince her, well, I'm not like that. And if, and if you come with me, then it won't be that way. And you've given her one experience right. that went well. Um, but again, 
if we think about things like confirmation bias, she believes that the dentist is a scary, painful place. Right. You gave her one one example that shows she was wrong. But when she thinks back to her past, she's going to discount that example mm -hmm. and play up the previous examples that did suggest it was a scary place. And so you're fighting against this natural tendency for people to discount new evidence if it doesn't confirm what they thought was true all along. It doesn't mean you can't win the battle. It just means you're, uh, you're fighting from behind. Okay. And when we come back from the break, I want to talk about some coping mechanisms that maybe you have some suggestions for. I have a few I want to ask your opinion on. You're listening to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, and we'll be right back. You can't take me as I am, not just a little bit. I don't know who to be. I'm a playful cup, baby, of the sea. I know you see it too, because you're too much for me. This is Clark Kellogg. Stay tuned for more of Dr. Kavitko. Estás escuchando con Dr. Kawiko aquí en su sesión favorita. Hi, I'm Dominique Weigert. Like what you hear? Why not use the show to promote your product or service by becoming a sponsor? Call 614-262-9588 to learn how. That's 614-262-9588. Call now. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko, general dentist and host of The Reasons We Smile Radio and Roadshow. I've been honored to help several famous people get a perfect smile, like Keith Carlos and Dominique Rygaard from America's Next Top Model and Ted the Golden Voice Williams from right here in Columbus. Isn't it time you had a celebrity smile? It costs less than you might think, and most of the time, it can be done in one visit. A new smile can make a world of difference. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. I'm Grandpa, and I go to Dr. Kavitko, and I still have all my teeth. Real ones. Where's my glasses? <laughs> Okay, we're back. We have about two minutes and 30 seconds or so, and I'm sorry that we're running out of time. But so what suggestions do you have for people who are so afraid, who are so afraid of the dentist that they can't get up their nerve to come? Are there coping mechanisms like breathing exercises, um, things like that? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, there's a number of different ways to calm yourself down, like uh, like breathing exercises, meditation, or the new buzz term is mindfulness. And I, I'm not really an expert in any of those, other than to say, if you practice slow breathing, that will help calm you slow down. Slow breathing? Yeah. Um, for me, it's more, and I focus on cognitive and mental uh, faculties and abilities. To me, the biggest thing to realize is that it's okay to be wrong. And what we're trying to tell you is you think it's going to be really bad and that it's going to be last for a long time you're wrong you're probably overestimating how bad it's i'm not saying it's going to be fun right, right. getting getting your teeth drilled is not fun right. but it's not nearly as bad as you think it's going to be and it won't last as long as you think it's going to be okay and that if you go um it's actually better than dealing with that slow ache that lasts for a long time right. so it's in your interest to just rip that band-aid off go get it done and then after it's done think back and Focus on the fact that it wasn't as bad as you thought. Okay. And use that as a memory for the next time. Just say, you know what? I was wrong. It's not so bad. And I'm glad I got it done. And it's way better than dealing with a low pain that lasts for weeks and weeks and months and months. Okay. And, and as a dentist, I would say you're also better off if you do that because you will have fewer cavities, fewer root canals, fewer abscesses, you know, fewer uh, bleeding gums episodes, things like that. And that you'll, you'll, You'll just be happy you did, and especially if you're coming to us because I make that a priority. I make that a, uh, a high priority that we take great care of everyone, that we don't hurt anyone uh, if we have to do it again uh, another day, like we do for children. And you've seen this. For children, yep. if they're not ready, we don't force it. Yep. We just let them think they had an, a successful appointment, bring them back in a few weeks uh, because they think that's a lifetime anyway. And compared to how old they are, that is a lifetime, right? Yes. So... <laughs> So there you go, folks. Uh, sounds like, um, not to use the word suck it up, but it is kind of that. Get yourself in a point where you can make it happen. Like you, you know, just like he said, peel off the Band-Aid and do it. It's okay to call the office in advance. We've had a lot of that, and we'll put our, your mind at ease the best we can. And we will do absolutely great work for you when you get there. But um, 
you have to come. You can't. It's not going to happen if you're staying at home. Nope. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Dr. White. I appreciate it. Uh, your insight. That's awesome. And uh, hopefully we help some people. Yeah, I hope so, too. Looks like that is all the time I have. Thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. It's at Dr. Kavitko. And go to my office Facebook page and like us. It's Dr. Kavitko and Associates. Remember that all past episodes, complete with video, are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com. Be sure to tune in next week and every week right here on your favorite station. Goodbye. This is Carly Red from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, the hit show on VH1, urging you to tune in next week with my dentist, Dr. Kavitko. If you're interested in learning more about this and other dental health topics, go to TheReasonsWeSmile.com to access full episodes of Dr. Kavitko's show. If you'd like Dr. Kavitko, the world's most interesting dentist, to speak at your next event, please call 614-262-9588. That's 614 Two six two ninety five eighty eight, or send an email to speaking at 